Hey, Spencer. Hey, Nick. We've got some fun things to talk about today. Um, you know, I want to start off probably telling you about the party in the park at Madison Square Park Conservancy. Uh, I went to that the other night and it was really, really like an ultra New York City style event. Um, I think you'd love to hear about it. The The other thing I think we should talk about, um, you know, what's going on in the townhouse market. We're Definitely. seeing a lot of interesting things in, in that area. So um, I, I'd like to get your take on, on some of those stats. Um, and then I really want to talk about what we just did at 180 Riverside. You know, I think yeah, that sale was exceptional um, and I'm really very excited for our sellers. Um, so let's I get started with the uh, Madison Square Park. What, what exactly went on cool. there? So every year the park has this gala. It's actually in the park. They put up this huge tent. Um, it's quite elegant. Um, it's styled to the nines. They usually have one of uh, a number of local restaurants hide all the food and beverages. Uh, it's really spectacular. Um, it's always sold out and um, it, it's really a lot of fun. This year is the 10th anniversary of the Madison Square Park Conservancy. So they really did an extra special event. Um, and they, they honored this year Danny Meyer, who is one of the founders of uh, the Madison Square Park Conservancy. He's the um, one that did Shake Shack in the park, right? Exactly. And he's a very well-known restaurateur. He's got restaurants all over the city and many of them started in Flatiron. They also uh, honored Lyndon B. Miller. She is known for many, many things. She's a famous author, but uh, she's most well known uh, with respect to the park for redesigning their uh, their design. She also uh, redesigned parts of Central Park. So she's uh, she's really found herself a niche as uh, a park designer. And um, it was really interesting to meet her. She's a fascinating woman. So how does the Conservancy affect the community? So they are charged with maintaining Madison Square Park. They get all their funds from donations. The city doesn't really support them. <clears throat> so it's up to them to provide all of the money that they need to make the park clean and safe and beautiful. Um, you know, this park does an incredible job of uh, being the gem in the Flatiron neighborhood. Uh, it's really such a, a great place. They recently just put in a new dog run and my new puppy <laughs> loves it there. Um, they have both a big dog run and a small dog, dog run and he has a blast. So uh, I, I personally enjoy the park every day. So the townhouse, you were talking about how the townhouse market really saw a big jump over the past couple of weeks in contracts. Yeah. Right. So what we noticed was there were it looks like there were about 25 contracts signed on homes that were four million or more. That included condos, co-ops and townhouses. But of those seven, seven of them were townhouses, yeah. one of which was uh, a very high end townhouse, which went into contract with the last asking price of around 20 million dollars right on uh, Waverly Place. Um, yeah, I was really impressed by that one. Um, I mean, not only was it huge, it yeah. was 15 rooms. It had six bedrooms, eight, eight bathrooms in a great location right in, in Greenwich Village. Yeah. But the styling was phenomenal. 22 um, feet wide, 80, almost 80 square feet. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a special townhouse. Um, and the renovation, I really implement the, the owners. They did a meticulous job renovating this townhouse. It was just beautifully designed, beautifully uh, performed. Uh, they did everything right and uh you know when you do everything right it reflects in your sale price um so i really congratulate them for that so we saw a contract signed last week were collectively worth almost 207 million dollars seven like we said seven of them are townhouses why do you think townhouses are fetching such high prices right now you know i think what we're seeing right now is the the unicorn townhouse the one that is beautifully renovated um they they've become very much in demand ever since covid people uh really want their own space they like the form of a townhouse so we've been seeing an uptick in demand for these properties and the the market is providing really quality product um and uh, the buyers are really responding and we're seeing record-breaking prices in this category 
Yeah, and it, it seems like the inventory is tight, right? So yeah. the buyers that are out there, even if they're willing to spend up to $20 million, the buyers that are out there don't have a ton to choose from right now. Exactly, yeah, exactly. You know, the townhouse owners that we used to, we do advise them to do renovations, keep up with maintenance. It's so important because uh, a townhouse buyer does a very thorough inspection and any little wrinkle will become uh, obvious and uh, perhaps even at a negotiating point. So, you know, if you own a townhouse and you think you may be selling in the next five years, those are the people we should be talking to because there's a lot of preparation that needs to go into place before you market a townhouse for sale. So this townhouse that was on Waverly Place, it was in Greenwich Village. Are we seeing more demand for townhouses in Greenwich Village or are you seeing more townhouses uh, demand in the West Village and Chelsea or is it really just everywhere? Are people just it's looking? It's the downtown, the downtown market generally seeing this spike right now. Um, we're not seeing the same kind of activity on the Upper East Side or the Upper West Side, which is also known for nice townhouses. Um, their market is, is much more stable. Also, they are very much in demand. Um, also, they fetch great prices. But the spike that we're seeing right now is downtown, um, which uh, I, I find very interesting. And I think it represents a new era of, down, uh, of townhouse buyers. So do you move on to 180 Riverside and talk about Matthew and Pamela? I do. I am so excited for them. Um, you know, that negotiation was really a bear. Yeah. Um, the, the property was on them for a while. The sellers really just had their, their heels dug in. Um, they tried well, some price changes. For good but, reason, right? They, they bought well, their place in, in yeah. 2020 and they claim they put $2 million into it. Even and if it, it was a million five, I mean, they had incredible fixtures in there, like waterworks, even waterworks fixtures in the bathrooms. Yeah. So was the ultimate sale price 3.65 million. Yeah. Took a bath on this property, but our buyers walked away with an incredible property for 365. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, I think the critical piece there was that we provided the seller with their exit strategy. We provided a buyer that was ready to go, completely approved. It, you know, really very cut and dry. We knew that they were going to get board approval. Their finances were all buttoned up. We provided all the materials that the seller would need to evaluate them as a, a, a no-nonsense buyer. And I think that appealed to them. And, yeah. you know, after all the frustration, all the time on the market, when we provided them with a risk-free exit, how could they not take it? Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly surprised that it was on the market for so long because it is just a stunning property, three bedrooms, three bathrooms. It overlooks Riverside Park. You can see the river. It's in yeah. a tremendously like old school, very like well-kept co-op. And like I said before, the finishes are just incredible. So um, it, it surprised us a little bit that it was still on the market, but at the same time, yeah. like we're super happy that Matthew and Pamela are the ones who ended up getting it. And I think they're I gonna wonder, be very happy there. I wonder if the situation with that listing had anything to do with the fact that these agents who were representing the seller, they really just seemed very frustrated with it. Um, I yeah. think they were also impatient. They were also at their wits end. Maybe they made some mistakes along the way. And, um, you know, I think during the, the course of negotiating, I just got this that they just wanted to be rid of this property. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and maybe that affected the seller's decision making as well. I don't know. Yeah, I agree with that. But they were great clients. Um, you know, I, I left because, you know, when we first them, when we first intro were introduced to them and they were a personal, which, you know, is uh, always makes me very happy that people are pleased enough with our work that they would refer them, refer us to their friends and family. But Matthew said to us on our first meeting. Yes, he said, you know, expect us to be very, very difficult clients. Yeah. And they were absolutely wonderful. They were. They were. Um, I'm very, very happy for them. I think they are they love this apartment. It's going to be a great place for them to raise their family. Um, and I hope we get invited over. So today we talked to Justin Square Park Conservancy Party in the Park in April. We talked about um, what's happening in the Manhattan townhouse market and all the exciting things are that all the demand and exciting things that are happening. And we also talked about uh, Matt and Pamela's sale at 180 Riverside Drive. 
all good all good fun subjects um and this for great you know i think some people are going to enjoy listening to this banter um other people may just want to go to our social media pages uh, visit our website um there's a lot of different ways for you to enjoy our content you can go to the our website nicknewyork.com as a, a pad for all of our uh social media and other content and uh, we hope that you enjoy it and thanks for tuning in